Uh, By you. the way, Honorable Lugolovi has an institution of memory. He was in this house when that money was allocated. He has been a lifetime chairperson of budget. Yeah, thank you so much, Right Honorable. Indeed, as you mentioned, I was a very strong advocate for the rehabilitation of Nambole. And uh, then, and we worked very closely with the colleagues to make sure that the work there begins. Uh, but for this particular issue that's on the table, I've just had a discussion with my senior, Honorable Matia Kasaija, on the issue of the balance of 17 billion shillings. Uh, the 17 billion shillings should actually not be a problem. Uh, I want to commit uh, to this country that, uh, and parliament that the 17, 17 billion shillings, which is a balance of the 97 billion shillings that was recently approved, uh, will be made available to ensure that the Nambore rehabilitation project is executed. And uh, we are going to trigger the process today to ensure that the money uh, is made available. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I hope uh, that meets the requirement of, of the House. Honor Honorable Minister, we want to thank you so much. Uh, we have the ministerial statement of which one of them is yours. So we are going to, today being a Friday, we are going to give you an hour as we handle other ministerial statements to first go and trigger. I don't know what. <laughs> to go and trigger, then you come back for your ministerial statement so that by the time we leave here, we know we have an evidence of a trigger. <laughs> so, Honorable Minister, please go and uh, start the trigger and give us evidence of the trigger and then you as you come back for your ministerial statement honorable members what we want is the money and what we want is evidence of the trigger so i have i have given permission to the minister to go and actually both ministers madam speaker the Minister of Finance has requested me to go with him so that uh, we all work within the available means to make sure that uh, we complete on the final project so as far as the 17 billion so is concerned. So the, the both ministers go and trigger I, I thank you. and deliver, give us evidence before we finish the house. But remember you have a ministerial policy statement, you come back. I, I, I don't want a question on sports. Please, Honourable Ministers, I can see you off. Next item. Item four. Hey, Shadow, Shadow, you want to join them? Honorable members, we will get evidence of the payment because the warrant has already been done, was already done, so we, get, we shall get evidence of what he calls a trigger. And after that, a forensic audit must be done on Nambole. We need to know how that money was used. Yes. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, in light of the debate that we had this morning, I wanted to seek your indulgence that you request the Honourable Minister of State for Sports. Now that he confirmed that he went, he handed over the site to bring the contracts and all the documents related to the construction of Akibwa Stadium. To avoid this uh, ping pong of uh, I did this, I didn't do this, those documents in showing the scopes of work, the type of stadium they are going to build, how much money, and the duration 
if it comes to parliament here, it will settle that matter and it now will be at peace and the other ones. We will do that. It is not about Lango, it is Ugandans. Ugandans are more interested. Some of us even didn't, we don't know Akibwa, but, but we are interested in knowing that there is a stadium in, in somewhere called Akibwa because Akibwa is a brand name. So when he comes back, we shall, we shall ask him to do that. Help. Item four, motion for adoption of reports of the following sectoral committees on the ministerial policy statement and budget estimates for the financial year 2024-2025. Item four one, the sectoral committee on health. Thank you so much. And uh, honorable members, you are aware that we are on the ministerial statements and um, we should be able to finish them. And as I said before, these statements are going for harmonization, reconciliation in the budget committee. I don't think we need to over-examine them. Let's have how much did you ask for? How much is being given to you? What are your challenges? And what are the recommendations of the committee? As brief as that, so that we are able to move Honorable Chair, I hope you are getting what I am saying. And um, I have been hearing about a corrigenda. I thought when a corrigenda is brought, is laid on table and forwarded to the Committee of Budget. This business of passing a co behind the, the doors and taking a corrigenda direct to the budget, we don't regard it as a corrigenda. Let it be laid on table, then we refer it to the budget to the budget committee. Chair, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. <coughs> Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the report of the Committee on Health on the Sectoral Ministerial Police Statement and the Budget Estimates for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Please lay. And the accompanying minutes. I beg to lay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam you. Speaker, I would want to thank this House for the money that they have given the health sector over the last three financial years and uh, the results are very evident. We have halved maternal mortality from 330 to 189. I think that is one of the best rates in the region. Uh, last year, we did our maiden kidney transplant in, January, in, in December and so forth. So money has been put to good use. Uh, colleagues, I would like to draw your attention to page zero. Those are the votes under the sector. Madam Speaker, there are 29 votes, meaning we have a lot of work to do. I beg that instead of reading verbatim, I draw your attention to where I think the core issues are. Actually, you should do that because you only have 20 minutes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. You've guided well. Um, right Honourable Speaker, on uh, page 4 we have the Ministerial Half-Year Financial Performance for 23-24. That's self-explanatory. We move to page 5. The Health Sector Half-Year Budget Performance for the Financial Year 23-24. Again, it's in a table form, self-explanatory. Page 6, the Key Physical Performance by the Ministry of Health for the Financial Year 23-24. That is half-year, July to December. Page 7, Health Infrastructure Improvements, Stroke Rehabilitation and Capital Development of Health Facilities. They are well listed there, right, Honorable Speaker? Page, Page eight, 8, Upgrade of Health Center 2 to Health Center 3s. Over the last financial years, 239 out of 340 Health Center 3s have been completed as by December 2023. 
and the detailed report has been submitted as Annex A. Right Honorable Speaker, page 10 shows the overall health sector budget proposals for the financial year 2024-2025. And Right Honorable Speaker, there has been a nominal change of 276 billion shillings. Last year it was 3 trillion. This financial year they proposed is 2.7 trillion. Right Honorable Speaker, we move to page 11. It shows the external project financing. That is by the development partners. Uh, it shows the scope as in financial 2023-24 and 24-25. There has been a reduction of 331 billion shillings, and this is due to the exit of some projects. Right Honorable Speaker, page 12 shows the vote-specific budgetary allocations. And like I had mentioned, we have 29 votes, so those are the allocations by vote. Um, Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to draw attention to page 14. Vote specific wage allocation. On column, on the row 16, which shows local government, there has been a drop of 788 billion shillings, which was not catered for in the budget estimates. And the reason that has been given is that this budget cut is due to Ministry of Finance doing the payroll audit exercise, so they have not captured it in the budget estimates. So we foresee a situation, right Honorable Speaker, that this money for wage for local governments in the first quarter, we may have a challenge of failure to pay health workers in local governments. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I would like to draw attention to page 19 underfunded and unfunded priorities. The total unfunded, I would like to make a correction there, is not 1,820 billion shillings, but it is 1,784.2 billion. So I would request that that is captured for the record purposes. Page 20, right honorable speaker, is a committee observations and recommendations under Ministry of Health, vote 014. We can proceed to the recommendations. Lack of critical human resources for health. Right Honorable Speaker, on page 21, we have a table there provided by Ministry of Health. It shows the wage requirements for senior consultant, medical consultant, medical officer special grade, for regional and general ho hospitals and the national referral hospital. It is 94 billion shillings. The committee recommends that government should address non-wage related attraction factors like housing in order to be able to attract and retain some cadres of staff, especially in hard to reach and distant areas. Government should ensure that adequate financing is provided to fill the vacant positions in all the health facilities in a phased manner, beginning with those in less than 50% staffing levels and increasing progressively to a minimum of 70% based on the current staffing norms. Two, inadequate funding for regional equipment maintenance workshops. The committee reiterates its earlier recommendation that 12.3 billion required fully functionalized regional equipment maintenance workshops should be provided in a phased manner starting with 6 billion shillings in the financial year 2024-2025 to support this function. Right Honorable Speaker, bullet three is inadequate funding to support renovation and equipment of health facilities. I'd like to draw your attention to page 23. The committee recommends an additional 30 billion be provided by Minister of Health for the completion of previous works and renovation of critical existing sites upgrade. Right Honorable, just to underscore that point, last year money was given, but it was shared and approximately 400 million shillings was allocated to 
each site. And that is not enough to complete the site. So we need that allocation of 30 billion. Uh, Government. Uh, doctor, maybe what you need to say the sites, uh, there's one for organ transplant where patients will be put to recover and give us which sites are those you're talking about? Uh, right, Honorable, this is for health centers. But oh. on the issue of organ transplant, I'll be coming to that. Okay. Thank you, Right Honorable. Okay. Then, uh, Right Honorable, bullet two is government of Uganda should procure a loan or grant for addressing a problem of the dilapidated health center falls and 125 constituencies that do not have health center falls. Right Honorable, the committee thinks that this should really address the issue of health center falls the way we did for health center threes. Bullet three for Karamoja subregion funds have been provided under the Italian. Karamoja Infrastructure Development Project. The procurement process, which is ongoing, should ensure that credible contractors are sourced and the project is completed in the stipulated time. It is one of the annexes, right, Honorable Speaker. Number four is non-functional ambulance system. The committee recommends that the Ministry of Health should be provided with 12.8 billion shillings for the financial year 2024-25 to enable it to establish in a phased manner, the national ambulance system. Bullet two should be provided with 54 billion to procure 158 ambulances for the constituencies that have not been allocated any ambulance. The existing fleet has 83 type B ambulances and 14 ambulances. Right honorable speaker, for reasons that are very obvious, it would be not very wise for us to go into the next two financial years if some of these constituencies don't have the 158 ambulances. So we beg that this is a matter of importance. That bullet three, an additional 17.6 billion to enable it maintain and functionalize the current fleet of ambulances under the emergency services department. Uh, right honorable speaker and colleagues, ambulances, both road and water are very expensive to maintain. The ambulance from Koboko round trip back to Kampala and back is about 900,000 shillings in terms of fuel. From Kalangala to the mainland and back in a motorboat is 200 liters, which is about a million shillings. So this 17 point, uh, th th this money that we are requesting for, right honorable speaker, should be provided for the maintenance. Right honorable speaker, Page 24, functionalization of the community health program. The committee recommends that six billion be provided to the Ministry of Health to enable it promote the community health program by offering training, retooling of VHTs in the community health program and expansion of integrated childhood case management in 61 districts. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I would like to draw your attention to page 25, the Organ Transplant Council. As you are aware, we did our maiden transplant in December 2023, and I would like to thank the House for passing the law. However, in the law, it stipulates that for any transplant to take place, there has to be a council. So the committee recommends an additional $5 billion be provided for setting up of the Organ Transplant Council. These funds will be used for training, benchmarking, setting up of offices, emoluments. The initial figure is predicted to reduce in the subsequent years when the council generates revenue from accreditation, inspection, and licensing. Uh, right honorable and honorable members, hospitals are ready. Rubaga is ready to start liver transplant. Mulago is ready to start the kidney transplant. So we are ready. Bullet eight, the interns and senior house officers. The committee recommends that 35 billion for allowances of medical interns and senior house officers be provided to train them adequately and considering the crucial role they play in service delivery. And of course, to prevent uh, the predictable strikes, right, Honorable? Page 26, inadequate funding for Uganda Red Cross. The committee recommends that an additional 5.82 billion be provided to URIC to be able to execute the emergency medical services and blood donor recruitment. 
This money was cut last year when money was cut by 80% from subventions. Right on our colleagues, page 26, surgical and medical camps. I'd like to draw your attention to page 27, which is a table and the sources Association of Surgeons of Uganda. They do surgeries as part of their pro bono activities annually. Last year they were in Lango, they did, five, they did 564, no, 1,414. The previous year they were in Bukedi, they did 564. The importance of these surgical camps is they help reduce the backlog on our regional referral hospitals. So the committee recommends 600 billion shillings be provided to 600 million, I beg your pardon. That's the cost of a car. Be provided to Ministry of Health as a subvention for surgical and medical camps annually. The output is enormous, right honorable. Health Service Commission, I beg that members read that part. Uganda Virus Research Institute, vote 127, that's page 28. Right honorable, the committee recommends on the issue of lack of funds to pay off squatters at Kamwanyi land. The committee reiterates its earlier recommendation that 5.4 billion be provided by UV to UVRI to pay off the squatters and secure the land for the much needed development. UVRI is seated on 70 acres, five have been encroached upon, and they are losing grants in, multi, in, 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 in millions of dollars because of, uh, because of that encroachment. Right Honorable Uganda Heart Institute, vote 115, that is page 29. Delayed commencement of works at the Naguru Nakawa land. The committee recommends as follows, Uganda Heart Institute should expedite the process of procuring a contractor so that works can commence at the Nakawa Naguru land. Mulago National Fire Hospital is already congested, therefore Uganda Heart Institute needs to have its own operational space. I would like to thank this house for passing the loan of $70 million from Badea, OPEC Fund, and Saudi Fund, with co-financing of $3 million from Government of Uganda. Right Honorable Speaker, we go to vote 114, Uganda Cancer Institute. I'd like to draw attention to page 32. There are many recommendations, but I'll tease out uh, some. An additional eight billion be provided to increase the medicines and sundries by the Uganda Cancer Institute. This will also cater for the new sites, like the one, the new one in Gulu. Ten point eight seven billion be provided for functionalizing the regional centers in Gulu and a satellite one in Barara to bring cancer services close to the people. Barara is already doing cancer services but uh, as an outpatient service. The government of Uganda should explore a possibility of acquiring a loan or grant for construction and operationalization of the Arua Mbale, I beg your pardon, and we insert Mbarara Cancer Regional Referral Centers. In the manifesto, it said four. Gulu has taken off, so it's, we need money for these three. Uh, right on Aribo, Bullet four, 62 billion be provided for clearing the outstanding obligation establishment of the nuclear medicine facility and pet center. Right on, we don't offer pet scanning services in the country, and many people who can afford have to go to Aga Khan or Kenyatta Hospital. Right on, and right on, speaker and colleagues, this money can be paid back in 10 years because it will not be free most likely 500,000 to a million shillings. Vote 116, page 33, National Medical Stores. I'd like to draw your attention to page 34. The table shows, table 14 shows the funding gap of NMS in billions of shillings. That is self-explanatory. The committee recommends that 262.1 billion be allocated to the national medical stores to enable the entity boost supplies of essential medicine supplies in a phased manner beginning with 
87 billion shillings this financial year. Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should front load operational funds to national medical stores to facilitate timely de delivery of essential medicines and health supplies in advance and to avoid delays. Right Honorable, the paradox is we have drugs in the warehouse of national medical stores in Kajans. The issue is money for operations. And I think the House needs to really make a pronouncement on that. The committee reiterates its earlier recommendation that an additional $4 billion be provided to NMS for procurement of kits of glucometers, BP machines, thermometers for the 3,000 health facilities across the country that belong to government. Right, Honorable? It's very common to go to health center threes and fours, and there's no BP machine. You can't even measure your blood glucose. Bullet four, 25 billion provided for procurement of rapid diagnostic kits for malaria, HIV, and other diseases. The Ministry of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development and the Ministry of Health should clear the 52.2 billion domestic areas for service fees for handling donated supplies, COVID-19 vaccines, and related supplies. Therefore, after costs of handling donated supplies should be factored in the funding negotiations and arguments. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, NMS also makes some money through warehousing and, uh, and surcharge services. So that's the amount of money government owes them. Funds should be provided to national medical stores for retrieval and destruction of expired COVID-19 vaccines and related supplies. Seven, 20 billion be provided for procuring of PPE supplies for the country. Eight, health facilities should enforce strict controls governing stock management practices. Health facilities should provide accountability for essential medicines. This will safeguard theft, irrational prescription, and poor stock practices. Right on, Mr. Speaker, I beg we proceed to page 36, vote 15, that is Uganda Blood Transfusion Services. Um, I would like to draw attention to bullet three. The rest are very self-explanatory, right, Honorable, but I'll tease out bullet three, which is the committee recommends that 2.6 be provided to Uganda Blood Transfusion Services for purchase of eight centrifuge machines and 600 million for assorted blood collection and IT equipment to equip the regional blood banks in Arua, Gulu, Fort Potom, Mbale, Masaka, and Barara. Uh, right Honorable, maybe just to let you and the House know that uh, three regional blood banks are more than 90% complete. That is Soroti, Arua, and Hoima. They were built with funds from UCREP, and meaning there will be need for money for wage and operationalization. So the committee recommends that 12.276 billion required by Uganda Blood Transfusion Services to recruit 164 staff be provided. This will raise the staffing levels to 41% and solve the challenge of heavy reliance on voluntary services. All right, Honorable Speaker, page 38, vote 418, Kawempe National Referral Hospital. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, again, with Kawempe National Referral Hospital, the issues are self-explanatory, but the major challenge is inadequate staffing levels. This hospital delivers 60 to 100 mothers daily and 27 caesarean sections with a staffing of 37.4%. So the committee recommends that 6.1 billion be provided for recruitment of additional staff to enable Kawempe National Referral Hospital reach 68% staffing level. Uh, right Honorable, the rest is self-explanatory. But Right Honorable and colleagues, please take note of, on page 39, overhaul and remodeling of the hospital plumbing system. It is an issue the committee has noted in the hospitals of Kawempe, Chirudu, Naguru, and Entebbe. 
Right on, everybody. These hospitals are as old as 10 years old, but the plumbing has given way. So we need to take interest in value for money. And uh, plumbing giving way after 10, uh, 10 years, right on, everybody. unacceptable. Page 41, Chirudu Hospital, that is vote 17417. Inadequate wage for recruitment of health workers. Uh, that is the same right honorable like Kawempe. Bullet two, inadequate funding for the bands and surgery unit. Right honorable, on page 42, the committee recommends that two billion be provided to mitigate the shortfall because patients under plastic surgery and bands require a lot of specialized attention and treatment. Right honorable, purchase of land, page 42 still under Chirudu, the committee reiterates its recommendation that five billion be provided to Chirudu National Fire Hospital for the purchase of five acres of land to enable expansion services, namely wards for burns and plastic surgery, ophthalmology, general dialysis, and ward expansion. To underscore that point, Naguru, Chirudu, and Kawempe were health center falls on a one-acre piece of land. So government built upwards seven stories. So there's need for expansion of these hospitals, land for expansion of these hospitals. Page 43, right honorable speaker. Mulago National Referral Hospital. Right honorable speaker, the issue of staffing in Mulago National Referral Hospital can be underscored by the intensive care unit. There's a table there, table 16. The hospital was expanded and increased to 44 ICU beds, but 21 are working. You were there about four months ago, right on able speaker. In the adult ICU of the 27 beds, only 14 are working. So right on able, on page 44, the committee recommends that an additional 529 million shillings, 529 million shillings be provided to Mulago National Referral Hospital for priority recruitment of 10 ICU critical staff. That is the annual cost. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I would like to draw your attention to page 45, still under Mulago, bullet seven, incomplete renovation of Lower Mulago Hospital. The committee recommends that 15.5 billion be provided to Mulago National Referral Hospital to complete civil, electrical, plumbing, and IT works to ensure full functionalizing of the hospital. Right, Honorable Speaker, we cannot, as a national referral, get ISO certification. And even for AFCON, Mulago is supposed to be the hospital of, so we have, for now, we have already failed that part. So I think this money has to be provided. I hope the Minister of Finance and Honorable Guang also take note of that. And uh, page 46, to complete the 150 staff housing units, the committee therefore recommends that an additional 4 billion be provided to Mulago National Referral to have the 50 units completed to cater for the urgent need to house critical care workers. And this will probably address the issue of, of absenteeism. Right Honorable, bullet nine, dialysis. The committee recommends that an additional two billion be provided to Mulago National Referral to cater for the shortfall of dialysis services. On the private market, dialysis costs 500,000 shillings. In Mulago, it has been subsidized to 120,000 shillings. That is government's contribution. I mean, the rest is subsi subsidized by government. And that's per session, right, Honorable Speaker. So by December, we had run out of supplies. So we need more money. Right, Honorable Speaker, bullet 10, neurosurgery commodities. The committee recommends that 600 million be provided to National Referral Hospital, Mulago National Referral Hospital, for the procurement of neurosurgery commodities throughout the Doctor, year. Doctor, just a minute. In the dialysis, yes. uh, you had a problem of human resource 
Is is that covered now? Uh, right on about the issue of uh, human resource for the hospital is a general one and it's captured in the human resource request for the hospital. For the general hospital? Yes, for the general hospital. And uh, the workers who work in different uh, departments are part of that, including the Okay. So, right honorable speaker, bullet 10, Mulago National Referral Hospital has 40 to 60 border border accidents daily. And most of those will have head injury. But we do not have a budget line for consumables. So the neurosurgeons, their hands are tied, meaning some of those people die. My humble plea to this house, if there is anything we should appropriate, is that 600 million shillings. Because even us, by the time they call next of kin, you're past the time for intervention. So 600 million shillings be provided to Mulago National Referral Hospital for the neurosurgery department. So that neurosurgery, neurosurgeons who we have can conduct emergency brain surgery. Right Honorable Speaker, Naguru Regional Referral Hospital. Page 48, the challenges are the same like Chirudo and Kawempe, and the recommendations are the same. But the bullet three, procurement of a CT scan, their CT scan broke down. So the committee recommends that 1.77 billion be provided to Naguru Regional Fire Hospital to have, no, sorry, the committee recommends that 500 billion for the purchase of a new updated CT scan, which will fetch the hospital some more ta non tax revenue. Butabika National Referral Hospital, right honorable speaker, the challenges are the same inadequate budget for medicines and supplies. The recommendations are well stated out there. But bullet three insufficient budget for food. The committee notes that since food is part of the treatment and the hospital takes full charge of patients feeding and cognizant of the increase in food prices, an additional 2.2 be provided to Butavika Mental Hospital to mitigate the shortfall for feeding. Lack of funds for the completion of the perimeter wall. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the patients in Butavika are known, very well known. They may not differentiate the boundaries of Butavika, so it's good that we house them safely. So, so there is no, the wall is not complete. Right, Honorable Speaker, the wall of Butavika Regional Referral Hospital is not complete, and it has been also their land has been encroached. So the hospital. So won't the patients run out? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Honorable Macho? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right on Airbus speaker, and I think. No, this but this is a very serious matter. We need the wall. We need the wall fence to be finished, because we know the nature of patients that we are handling in that area. So that should really be handled. Thank you, Right Honorable. And the fact that 13% mental health illness affects 13%, we can also use this as a study population. Any of us here can be candidates. We can actually start from here. So, so Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I would like now to move to regional referral hospitals. That is page 51, the observations, understaffing. Table 17 is self-explanatory. Bullet 2, unspent wage of regional fire hospitals as of midterm financial year 2023-24. That's on page 53. There's a table there showing unspent wage. And the committee had a challenge 
that much as they have now been cl cleared to recruit, by the time workers are deployed, it will be June. So of that 72.3 billion in table eight, around 80% is going to go to the consolidated fund. And the committee was thinking, right, right honorable speaker and colleagues, can this money be revoted? I'm not a custodian of the PMFA Act, but I would let the House guide that the money that has not been spent on wage, can it be revoted to other areas of the health sector that need a one-off expenditure? Page 53, upgrade of Entebbe Regional Referral Hospital. The committee recommends that 8.1 billion and non-wage recurrent of 6 billion be provided to enable the complete transfer of Entebbe Hospital to a regional referral hospital. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, remember that Entebbe was a district hospital for Wakiso. It's now a regional referral hospital. So we need that money to enable it to operate fully. Right, Honorable Speaker, I would like to draw your attention to page 54. Dilapidated infrastructure in regional referral hospitals. The committee recommends that Ministry of Health should assess all regional referral hospitals and quantify the amount required for rehabilitation. The Ministry of Finance reinstates 20.3 billion withdrawn from regional referral hospitals for development. This money, right honorable, was cut last year. And hospitals like Soroti Regional Referral Hospital are in a very dilapidated state. Number three the assessment be done in regional referral hospitals about the status of mortuaries in financial year 2024-25. For mortuaries, I beg your pardon. For financial year 24-25, Moroto and Arua regional referral hospitals should be prioritized for the construction of modern mortuaries due to the very dilapidated state of the existing ones. Therefore, 1.5 billion should be provided for the two mortuaries. Bullet four, 11.8 billion be provided to the Ministry of Health to enable it carry out the much needed expansion and rehabilitation of Soroti Regional Referral Hospital, phase one. For those of you who have been there, it is in a very dilapidated state. And remember, right honorable, they separated twins. So there's a lot of work being done there. Government should look into the possibility of acquiring a grant or loan for the rehabilitation of dilapidated hospitals. Right Honorable Speaker, bullet 7, page 56, incomplete construction of oxygen plants. Page 56, there's a table there which shows the status of oxygen plants across, across the regional referral hospitals. The committee recommends UPDF should finalize with the construction and equipping of all oxygen manufacturing plants at all regional referral hospitals. Government should provide an additional 1.5 for the maintenance of oxygen plants at regional referral hospitals. Right Honorable, the issue of unstable power supply, it is across all health institutions. The committee recommends Ministry of Health and Ministry of Energy should ensure that hospitals are connected to dedicated power lines and are charged industrial rates. A cost-benefit analysis of solar power to hospitals should be undertaken by Ministry of Health and Energy. Three, nine billion should be provided to the Ministry of Health for procurement of power stabilizers for 15 regional referral hospitals. Right Honorable and colleagues, to put this into context, there was a power surge last year at Uganda Heart Institute. People who on critical life support machines were left in a very critical state. And we had to borrow machines overnight from two neighboring countries, thanks to air transport. And when Ministry of Finance gave us money to replace the machines, we returned in the spirit of Pan-Africanism. But this should not be the case. We need these power stabilizers. Um, right Honorable Speaker, page 21. Page 58, table 21, incomplete projects in regional referral hospitals. We put it in a table form to show you there are projects, right, honorable speaker and colleagues, that we started building in 2017. 
but these have not been complete. And there are many challenges in terms of variation in cost due to inflation and contractors being on site outside their contract duration, and this can present legal challenges. So the committee therefore recommends Ministry of Health should not authorize any new projects for regional referral hospitals until the stagnated projects are complete and fit for use. For any exceptional case, Parliament should be provided with the evidence of availability of funding with until completion. Two, government should avail the 79.123 billion required to complete the listed projects. Going forward, all new projects should be undertaken with consultation from Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development and Ministry of Health. Now, right honorable speaker, when you look at that table, there are hospitals like Masaka that requires 590 million shillings. That's the cost of a brand new car to finish their ICU. Gulu requires about 3 billion shillings to finish the interns hostel and, and so forth. So we can start with the low hanging fruits. Uh, right honorable speaker, our general observations. Non-tax revenue collections. I think that is self-explanatory, but uh, bullet one under non-tax revenue collections. The committee recommends that Minister of Finance should adjust the NTR ceiling and also return NTR funds to the hospitals. Funds collected from NTR can be used by hospitals to improve service delivery, especially in the private wing and to maintain hospital equipment. Right on your Maybe the recommendation should be that the, the, the Public Finance Management Act should be amended to the effect that institutions like hospitals should be able to retain their NTR to be able to operationalize. Because it is an operation of the Public Finance Management Act, not just pure finance. Yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I think this will. Uh Can I have the report finished? Thank you, Right Honorable. And I, the, w the way you've guided will help in uh, ensuring that we operationalize uh, private wing services. Uh, bullet two is private wing services. The committee recommends the budget for private wing services should be enhanced to match with revenue collections. There should be a deliberate effort to support hospitals with capital development funding to construct and provide private wing services. To put this into context, the Women's Specialized Hospital, their private wing generates 6.4 billion shillings annually, and yet we are not using it to full capacity. Projections show it can give us 20 billion shillings, including Mulago Hospital once complete. Bullet three, the Ministry of Health should revise the current private wing policy guidelines that prohibits recruitment of contract staff. The contract staff can purposely be used in the private wing. If you get a consultant from Nakasero, he can be contracted to come and offer services instead of being a full employee of Mulago Hospital. Functionality of lower level health centers, the committee recommends the Ministry of Health should plan to build capacity and equip lower level health facilities to manage within their facilities. And this really speaks to health center threes and fours. If we equip them, make them functional, then we will not have the spillover that we see in regional hospitals. Health financing, right honorable speaker. And the committee also interacted with health development partners, and we are in agreement that the health sector should look for alternative sources of domestic financing. The committee therefore recommends as follows. One, increase in sin taxes for harmful products such as alcohol, tobacco. If the tax on harmful products is increased by 20%, additional revenue could increase from 95.3 million in financial year 2023 to 126 US dollars in financial year 26 27. 
Bullet two, government should consider a national motor third party insurance fund capitalized by the revenue collected from motor third party collections. If only 5% of gross premiums collected from motor third party insurance are earmarked for motor third party fund, an average of 2.9 could be generated per annum. Government should consider ring fencing social media tax for upgrading of health centers and for community health financing as the community health strategy launch remains largely unfunded. We have a community health strategy, but as, minutes, as a health sector, but this has never been operationalized. Finally, right honorable speaker, as I conclude, ICUs in regional referral hospitals. Table 22 shows ICUs in regional referral hospitals. I would like to draw attention to three Masaka regional stalled because of 590 million shillings. Mbale, Fort Porto, and so forth. But right on Ebo, the point I'm trying to underscore between Katuna and Kampala, we only have one ICU in Barara, and it has four beds. So if it is full, then uh, we can make phone calls to the creator, because uh, sometimes when you're in an ICU state, you may not travel by road, but you may need to be airlifted. And the, the, and the you, police you, told you us You don't there. have to put him on order. You know doctors? Doc, a doctor will see you dying and he will say, you'll be fine. Doctor, Doctor Chris is here. <laughs> so, so he's basically saying, if we cannot improve on the ICUs, what else do you have to do? You will have to go to be with your creator. Yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. As I conclude, government policy on health emphasizes access to health quality by all Ugandans as a means of guaranteeing their contribution to the social economic transformation. In line with the government's commitment to prevent health care as opposed to curative services, which are costly, more emphasis should be on ensuring mm. equitable access to well-equipped mm. health facilities, trained and motivated health workers, in addition to improvement in the health care delivery systems. The committee recommends that yeah. a total of 2,707,957,290 shillings, that excludes KCCA, Uganda AIDS Commission, and local government, of which 1.3 trillion is recurrent and 1.3 trillion is development expenditure, be provided for the health sub program under the votes listed in those two tables. Right Honorable Speaker, the mantle of delivering health services rests in this house, but I conclude by saying our pregnancies in this country have run away, especially the teenage pregnancies. And I think we have an epidemic of teenage pregnancies. The beauty about it is we have women members of parliament, so I think we need to take a deliberate stance as this house to address this issue. Otherwise, with a population of 1.5 million, 1.5 million... Uh, Kanya, you're asking uh, what about men when you are the ones who are creating teenage pregnancies? Huh? You are creating teenage pregnancies, you're... Right, right, Honorable Speaker, we get one. Proceed on what? Ma Madam Speaker, our record has captured that uh, one Ekanya is involved. <laughs> <laughs> you a man. It is men who are causing teenage pregnancies. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. So, it is not a Kenya as a person, but men. So, right, hon 
Right Honorable, Honorable members, listen to the chair. The point he's raising is really very crucial. The person who is becoming pregnant as, and, as at that early age, maybe your daughter. It could be out of rape, out of what, and that kind of thing. Uh, chair, continue. So, right on your boat, our population is 1.5 million deliveries annually. So, in 10 years, those are 15 million people. But are we generating enough industrialization to be able to look after that population? Because we, sometimes it's parish development model and things like that, but we need to look at the upstream factors, address the issue of the population, and uh, a hospital like Iganga gives birth to 7,200 deliveries annually. So in three years, that is a sub-county, right on our speaker, to put it into context. That's the sub-county. Yeah, because that's, uh, yeah. So, right honorable speaker, I beg to conclude. And I would like to thank uh, my committee members and uh, the Minister of Health for thank their support. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> honorable members, when you hear f from what the chair said, the, is the issue of the Cancer Institute you get the cancer patients lying down, they even have nowhere to be put. It is really too congested. So if we love Ugandans, we love our people, we should be mindful of what we should do in the Cancer Institute. The dialysis center, I went there, as you had the chair say, I went to the dialysis center, I went to ICU, I went to the Cancer Institute, I went to the Women's Center, the staffing. We have the best equipment in Uganda, the best. Some of our people have been saved from Mulago. And if you want to go to a hospital where you can get equipment, go to Mulago. But you find we have the ICU machines, but we don't have the staff can't even just provide for money for staff. When you look at the issue of the interns, we are failing, we are going to continue with that issue of interns, day in, day out, and whatever. And then you have generally the staffing issue, dilapidated hospitals. The structures are dilapidated from sub-county level to regional. Then you find somebody drawing a, a picture. This is a dilapidated hospital in Bukedea. I think I'm the one supposed to work on it. I'm not government. Huh? So we must work on these hospitals, really. When you look at projects, even the projects that we have started have not been completed. Can we have them completed? By the way, Lobo has started. <laughs> Loboa as that I went there and then you have unstable power. How can you have unstable power in a hospital assuming an operation is taking place? An operation is taking place, what happens? There are people in the ICU, there are children in the incubation center. You find there is no water in a hospital. No water in the hospital. Women are delivering. And then you find there is no water. What happens? Then you find a hospital. I will be selfish to say a hospital of uh, a regional referral hospital, dilapidated. Soroti, whichever. So members, we must take the things of uh, of health very, very seriously. Very seriously. And um, when you're talking about it, it's not about your constituents. I know Nakaseke. Nakaseke, first tell me, the ambulances. Yes. Honorable Minister, there was a problem here. There was an issue that you issued ambulances. Some constituents got even three. Others never got even one. 
But, but since you're going into a budgeting process, since you're going into a budgeting process, it's high time you get constituencies to get ambulances. Uh, Alan? Uh, thank you so much. Alan. My concern All of you. Is, is on page... All of you are drunk on hell. Yes. Yeah. And nobody should repeat what another person has said. Okay, let me first introduce my visitors. If you know that somebody has said what you wanted to say, don't repeat because it covers. We are not debating for constituencies. It is for this country. In the public gallery this morning, we have students and teachers from Brentwood Nursery and Primary School. That is in Kisasi. You're most welcome. The little angels are there. They are here to witness the proceedings. And you're very, very smart. Thank you so much for coming. In the VIP gallery this morning, we have members of Mbale Public University Establishment Committee. And the LOC five chairpersons of Bugisu subregion. You're all most welcome. They are represented by all the members of Bugisu. And uh, there they are. I can, hey, Honorable Polot. Okay, they are represented by us. Because, because of Polot being my MP and Kachumbala being in Bali, you're most welcome. And thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you so much, Madonna Speaker, for the opportunity. Madonna Speaker, my concern is on page 22. And it is about inadequate funding to support innovation and the equipping of LSA facilities. The report shows that uh, almost 125 constituencies do not have any single LSA centre for, including Nakaseke Central. I totally support the recommendation by the committee that. Uh, the government should provide adequate funding to this uh, uh, issue and uh, the committee recommend that uh, the government should get a loan but on top, on top of that the government should also uh, stop unnecessary uh, expenditures in different entities and secondly it's on page 23 about uh, non-functional ambulance system 158 constituencies do not have any single ambu an ambulance, including Nakaseke Central. Madam Speaker, almost 50 a billion, as recommended by the committee. I also totally support this because when you look at Nakaseke Central, we have uh, a Chikamu Center Center 3, it is overwhelmed. The population is too high, and in Nakaseke Center, we don't have any single other center for. It is really, really a shaming. Yet, this is where the government of NRM fought from. And, and among the 10 points program, it promised Uganda that this region should be rehabilitated, and really, in Nakaseke, we are suffering. The NRM abandoned. Nakaseke District. Thank you. Honor, honor, honorable members, honorable members, we are not talking about political parties. And as I've always reminded you when, you, when we are in the house here, we are all members of Parliament of Uganda. 
not of NRM, not of NOV, not of uh, DFCU, F FDC. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I am also happy, much as Honorable Alan is uh, a NOV, he's a product of uh, NRM. Uh, Honorable Amero. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the Chair and the Committee for identifying these very pertinent issues in their report. However, Right Honorable, Chair, uh, right Honorable Speaker, I wanted to speak about Soroti Regional Referral Hospital. Right Honorable Speaker, the state of Soroti Regional Referral Hospital is a very, very alarming, like the Committee has alluded to. But also, there's an issue of uh, Soroti Referral Hospital having land for the construction of the Regional Referral Hospital. That hospital no longer suits the status of a Regional Referral Hospital. Of a city. Of a city. Actually, right, Honorable Speaker, the hospital should be left as a hospital for the city, and the Regional Referral Hospital should be built where the land has been provided by the local government. Right, Honorable Speaker, I also want to raise the issue of uh, uh, scanning machine. Amuria District Hospital has no scanning machine. Some of these things are very necessary because you can't look at the inside of someone when you are just using your bare eyes. So there are some small things that the government needs to really plan for if we have to look at the health of our people. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, the, the ambulances have been given to those districts that have received. I have not heard about budgeting for their maintenance and the fueling because this burden is actually going to the local people and us as politicians, leaders of those places. You find that an ambulance breaks down and nobody goes ahead to maintain it. So you are called upon to come and do this, which is not our work as members of parliament, Thank right, Honorable you. Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, as I wind up, there are districts this, where c c cities have been carved out from. We have not heard about a plan of putting up a uh, hospital. Thank you, Achen, Dokas, Masava, Yik. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, allow me to thank the committee and especially the chairperson for presenting a very good report with very good recommendations. I know you've told us not to, to be specific on districts, but allow me to begin from Lango. That's where I come from, that the entire sub-region of Lango, we have only one regional referral hospital and one district hospital with a huge population that doesn't manage to serve the population well. But also from the lens of equal opportunities, right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I concur with the recommendations from the uh, Committee of Health. Overall, within the country, we have 8,272 specialists required in the different departments, but only 307 are available. And therefore, we know that we have the need to ensure we need that budget to maintain and recruit the staffing which are indicated in that report. We also know we have sub-regions like Bukedi with seven districts without any regional referral hospital. That is really bad for our population. Our, in the whole country, we have 172 sub-counties without health center threes. And therefore, people have to move long distances to access health facilities, this is undermining our progress. Me, I'm talking as NRM, with all due respect and, 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 and humility, we need this. Whether NRM or other parties, we know we need health. It doesn't discriminate. Honorable clarification, please. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Uh, when you start talking about your parties, for us we want services. 
I used to be in uh, I used to be in FDC. I started building my hospital when I was in FDC. I have finished when I'm in the NRM. So it is not about a party, it is not about what, but let's work as government and make sure that everybody gets health facilities, every district, every region. And uh, what you said about Bukedi, Ichidachonka, Bukedi needs a regional referral hospital. It is the only unfortunate part with Bukedi is that it is very near Mbale Regional Faro Hospital, very near Tororo, okay? But leave that alone, they need a hospital. Yes, Masaba? Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. One, uh, when you look at Section 29, Subsection 3A of the PFMA, uh, it states that the, the section that talks about collection, deposit, and retention of revenue, uh, there are entities that shall retain revenue where it's in form of license, fee, fines, as long as they're authorized by an appropriation of parliament. One of the challenges we have is the uh, Ministry of Finance has failed to um, acknowledge this and increase the limits that these entities that do collect these revenues can have. So I think as parliament, we need to stand firm on this because it's the law. Many of these regional referral hospitals collect revenue and uh, these revenues have been increasing, but unfortunately, they have had uh, the same limit for over years. Do we, do we budget for the entities? Yes, what I'm talking no, about. No, what I'm saying, have the entities brought that request? And we as we as parliament, we reject Yes, right. Yes. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. The net effect of the of Section Twenty Nine Three, the basis of infrastructure, uh, lands. You have a report. The, the basis for Honorable Karim's submission is that um, the moment Parliament passes a budget, and the votes limits have been indicated. When they run short of operational funds, yet they have NTR, then they can write to parliament and make a request to retain. That's the effect. It was the basis for the motion we moved for local governments to retain revenue here. Moved by the Honorable Naluima, and uh, parliament actually carried that motion to allow them to retain their monies because of the laggard nature of financial operations from the Ministry of Finance. So, so it's up to them to get out from their slumber and be proactive and implement Section 29.3, right, Honorable Speaker. We are not the ones to implement. No. Yes. They should request. It is, not, ah. it, is, it is them to request. And then for us, we passed the motion. There is another clarification. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. And uh, maybe there is an issue that they talked about, about the distribution of medicines. NMS. NMS. And I, I happen to have worked I knew with you'd NMS have, you're going to say for NMS. eight years. Now, there is, a, there is a challenge. And when at the beginning of the, I think last year, w w during, in the middle of last year, you remember when there was total stockouts. And whenever I would ask NMS, they would say they have the medicine, but they don't have the money to take exactly. the medicine. Now, where does the challenge come in? The challenge comes in when finances don't utilize any money in operations corrected at source. And finance takes a month before disbursing the money in the new quarter. And what does that mean? That if NMS sends out five trucks or vehicles in a day, you need a turnman, you need a driver, they all need allowance, and they need fuel. If you don't have, you'll have to wait for a month before you send the medicines, waiting for finance to send the release. What does that result into? That if you are sending two vehicles per day, you are delaying a whole cycle, and the country will be in a total outcry 
for medicines. There has been uh, several meetings between the Minister of Finance, even some chaired by the Prime Minister, to resolve the impasse. Three years down the road, we still come back to the same thing. Even now that we are going into a new financial year, we shall have the same challenges of the same outcries, yet it is a matter of allowing an institution and you audit it and then operations flow smoothly. Clarification, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Karim was still on the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Right Honorable. Uh, the issue, the point I was raising here, it is uh, finance is frustrating many of these colleagues of us because we have even a resolution as parliament that they can do spend this money, but finance tells them to send back all this money and in the end, uh, the, the financial will end without them getting back this money. Uh, secondly, and lastly, Right Honorable Speaker, it concerns uh, the uh, 20 billion I've seen on page 55 that was withdrawn. I think Minister of Finance still needs to come and explain how they withdrew money uh, for development that was sent to regional referral hospitals because one of the projects... So who is here for finance? Uh, the minister went to trigger, but <laughs> right honorable, they need to explain the circumstances because I remember uh, in the uh, previous session. Doctor, are you sitting in for finance? Uh, anyway, government chief whip. Government chief whip, take our concerns. We had a resolution passed in this house where we agreed. The money should be what Honorable Karim is raising. And then the issue of just mere transportation of drugs from NMS to different medical what? Different medical services is uh. always delayed and that brings a blackout in the system. And right honorable, on that point of uh, the money that was withdrawn, I remember the minister committed uh, specifically about Mbale Regional Referral Hospital that it will be done and the funds had been provided about for 4.2 billion to complete the surgical complex. And I remember you requested to even come and commission. It's on the hansard and I yes. promise. But it's surprising that this money has been withdrawn and when you look at the status of the Regional Referral Hospital, it's quite alarming. We have no oxygen plant. We do not have a surgical complex. We do not. A lot is happening in Imbale, and it's sad that we are seeing over 200 billion in the same financial being sent to Luboa Hospital. And when you compare with the 79 billion required to complete all the regional referral hospitals, it's quite sad, right, on band. I think something needs to be taken. Action needs to be taken. Yes, uh, procedure. Madam Speaker. At the beginning of this budget process, you, is, you issued an order to which uh, we expected the government chief will to ensure compliance. One was that the technical people, Minister of Finance, should be here. Today, when you allowed the Minister of Finance to go on the trigger, I expected the technical people to be here so that they concentrate, pick these issues so that we don't really debate and then tomorrow again we are in a cycle. Are we really proceeding very well that even the technical people are not here? Honourable members, I have only confirmed that the people seated behind our staff of parliament. And that's why we have asked the government chief whip to be their secretary, take notes and, and communicate. And he's very good at communication. He, 
He, he thank you. Faith. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the chairperson and the members for well elaborated the report. Madam Speaker, on the issue of Italian loan, in 2018, we were invited in Moroto with all the technical people in Karamoja to sit district by district to, to plan for the loan. But uh, I'm surprised that some of the early centers that were also budgeted for are missing in the list that was already approved by districts. So we need the clarification from the minister where, those, where, did, where did they deleted some of the early centers, including one in my constituency that was allocated 714 million shillings. It's and not in the list. And that is the only so, hospital you have. And that's the only hospital that I have, which is a unit, not even early center yeah. too, <laughs> Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, on the issue of Moroto Regional Hospital, Madam Speaker, in the entire Karamoja, we don't have a refrigerator, a fridge. For example, if a person dies, you have to take it to, you have to, take it to Mbale. You have to take it to Bustema for yeah. preservation. So the whole of nine districts in Karamoja, we don't even, even alone, so Roti doesn't have. So you have to travel across to access the... Actually, that's, what, one, that's one of the issues so they have raised. That's one of the things. Then the other issue is the day when... I want to thank the Minister of Health. When, the day when they were earning the ambulances, they say that only, uh, each ambulance receives only 2 million shillings for fuel and service every quarter. So can it really work? So I want to appeal my colleagues that we need to... Thank you, Faith. Thank, thank you very much, you right know, Honourable he, Speaker. You first leave it to finish. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. One only. On the issue of the, the minister said that they were going to purchase air, air ambulances in the future so that they can put to every region for an emergency. So we, we need also to support the Ministry of Health. For it's, it's not fun, but this is an emergency issue. That when we have an air ambulance, it can even go to another yes. region in time and the you, person can be saved. Thank you, you see, you Ike, the one you see there is always foresighted. When we had just come to Parliament, he said, we should put a what? A flyover. Now we are going to put underground. Uh, a what? Tunnel. Don't you see it's far-sighted? So now. <laughs> thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the Chair for the detailed report presented. On the issue of... Uh, of uh, power cuts, I want to make a submission particularly on the issue of uh, water bills, which when water is not flowing in the plumbing system, it, the system depletes faster. And that has always been a challenge, right honorable speaker, and I am very aware that even when the Committee of Natural Resources was making a presentation, especially in the area of uh, natural of, of water. The hospitals have one of the highest bills, and they are not being paid, and there is a threat for the NETR, especially for the National Water to recover its bills and run. They are going to cut the water from the hospitals, and this is a warning that it is going to be very alarming. So it's something that needs to really be taken care of, right, Honorable? Oh, my chair is right here with information. Information. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Magolo, for giving way. The information that I would like to give you is that uh, the problem that we have with the supply of water to institutions is actually a problem of release of funds from the Ministry of Finance. Uh, yesterday, when we discussed the, the report of the uh, Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, 
uh, it was sort of construed that the user departments don't pay their water bills. But in effect, when we interrogated this matter in our committee, we found that the problem is release of funds from finance. Every time finance releases the money, the user departments pay the money. So I think the onus is on this house to compel Minister of Finance to always release monies budgeted for utilities. That is the information I wanted to give you. Thank you very much. Chair, uh, for the information. There's another clarification. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Colleague. Right Honorable Speaker, I remember when we were here discussing the stages of our readiness post-COVID. We talked about the issue of utilities. And there was unstable supply of power and water. And I would like to ask Honorable Colleagues, why would the major installations in this country be subject to paying those tariffs? Just like other countries amended it. For example, military garrisons, hospitals, prison services, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, health centers. Because this should be used as a trade-off for rebate. I look at a situation where a police patrol would charge National Water and Sewerage Corporation to safeguard its, its installations or to do rapid response. Why? Because recently, you remember, you intervened, right, Honorable Speaker, Naguru, me, <laughs> police barracks didn't have water and uh, ginger road and power. This is appalling. We can sit here in this house and create what we call a trade-off. A trade-off for the most desirable installations of society, of this government. And this government can do the trade-off so that we are not in the same uh, And that conundrum. is a very, very good idea. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, for example, the failure to have the three-phase power lines that has failed to, to, to bring about the takeoff or the operationalization of the ICU in Fort Porto. The minister said we don't have three-phase power even when we have the issue is installed. So uh, why would we be the producers of power, transmitters of power, collectors of power, now even Umeme, that is the, the, the time that Umeme is going to be out of the picture, and we say we will not have power. So I think government But, but even when we talk about the trade-off when it comes to, to release by finance, finance doesn't do that. Thank you yes. very much, Right Honourable Speaker. On the issue of... Uh, the report that is an issue which I expected to find from that report, and that is the MRI, the Magnetic Resonance Imaging Scan, which is a very, very important machine for imaging in this country, where accidents have become a norm in this country, and everywhere. For example, in the past five months, I have had about five patients coming to me that they need to do the MRI scan, and it's not anywhere in we could have had this in regional hospitals so that people can find a service of MRI services in these places, right, Honorable Speaker. And the cost Thank is you. high, it ranges between 1 million and 1.5, which is not for a common person whom we are dealing with. Finally, right, Honorable Speaker, in the issue of the Cancer Institute, which is to provide cancer prevention and care, the chair, I want to bring, I want to thank what the message that came out about prevention and it brings about the issue, the aflatoxin issues. That needs a multi-sectoral approach because it is in agriculture, it is in trade, it is in, in, in health. So we need a multi-sectoral approach in climate change as the extreme weather conditions come up, they exacerbate all these issues. So that goes back to prevention, right, Honorable Speaker, that we need to take it up to ensure Thank you. that we, Thank you. we approach it holistically. Thank you. I, Chair, I didn't hear anything about the VHTs. Uh, uh, the VHTs getting, because they walk a long distance, for them to get gumboots, bicycles, 
basically those smaller things. And if it is there, then that is okay. Mm. Okay. And when you speak on this one, you don't speak on the next. Teenage, teenage pregnancies. Yes. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, it is a pity that we are still grappling with this challenge in this country. We went to Terego District as a surprise. We found 2,320 girls had been impregnated in a spate of seven months. This is just one district. Yes, Terego District. So the rate of teenage pregnancies is extremely alarming. And I was there with the Honorable Woman MP for Arua. But right Honorable Speaker, this is a challenge that is in all our districts. And it is very unfortunate that government has provided UPE, USE programs that are free and we actually thought that this should keep the girls in school. So it cannot be a responsibility of women members of parliament to end these teenage pregnancies. It is all, and especially the male members of parliament, because it is the men that actually impregnate the girls. So I want to request that let it be an effort for all of us. Let it be all of us. This is what I'm saying. Let it be a task for all of us not only the women MPs, to, end, an order from to end the teenage pregnancies in this country. Order from Okirol. I, I want to thank you, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, and sincerely I'm um, a bit intrigued by the submission of my senior colleague that this is the duty of men. You see, Right Honorable Speaker, there are very responsible men in this parliament. And when you do a, stat a sweeping statement, which is a ban wagon kind of statement, I look at all these able men here. I think let's not run away from the real issue that the mentorship and the parentage is one of the key family fundamentals that we should all undertake. So is the, right, is the member in order to make a sweeping statement to criminalize that all men, including the government chief whip and all these people, <laughs> is she in order? Uh, including Dr. Chris. <laughs> Actually, including the president, because he's also a man. Thank you. Is she in order? Honorable members. Honorable members. Honorable members. Uh, Honorable Sarah was saying that the blame is put on the women and yet it should be both on men and the women. But the point you've raised is a very important one. On parenting. On parenting. On the mentorship. And then talking to these young girls, counseling these young girls, these girls need to be counseled. And when you counsel them, that's when you'll find that you'll find maybe a girl prefers better to speak to a woman to woman talk. And that is the counseling we need to do to these girls to reduce those pregnancies. But at the same time, as I said before, that trigger, I welcome back. So, can you conclude, Sarah? Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, my brother Okirol, thank you for that clarification. Right Honorable Speaker, he did not pick my point. The point is that all of us should be involved in ending this challenge of teenage pregnancy in this country, both male MPs and female MPs. But also, secondly, secondly Right Honorable Speaker, we have a challenge. We are talking about these regional referral hospitals. When you go to Mbali, Regional Faro Hospital. Mbale has the widest catchment area, serving Bukedia.
as a region, serving Kapchora as a region, and even parts of Busoga. So, right honorable speaker, how I wish that the Mbale Regional Faro Hospital that has some facilities that are near completion should be supported so that they are complete. You go to the hospital and find five babies, six on one single bed. So, right honorable speaker, Tororo now hospital is actually a training center. Not properly accredited, but somehow Bustema University medical students are actually using this facility. So I wish the Ministry of Health aware of the challenge of the catchment area for Mbale Regional Faro Hospital can actually upgrade Tororo and have consultants there, just like you did for Mitiana, so that the senior consultants can actually train the doctors in that area, but also provide the services. We have the Rubongi Army, which is also supplementing the efforts of Tororo Hospital, but they lack space. Actually, that could also help us. And these doctors, are in the medical workers in the Rubongi Hospital are also doing a good job. Lastly, I want to thank the Ministry of Health for the ambulances that you provided, for the 100 constituencies. However, right honorable speaker, there is a challenge can I conclude? Fueling that, these facilities. Uh, that, that was already said. I said, don't repeat what was said. A, a motion? Yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. Right Honorable Speaker, having listened to many of my colleagues, and now that some of the colleagues are not following your instructions, that they should not be repetitive, are moving a motion that a question be put. Put you put a your motion. <coughs> right honorable speaker. I am moving oh, a, a Honorable Members. Rule nine <laughs> Honorable Members. Honorable Members. We have to finish this ministerial statement. That is principle number one. Number two, I know you all appreciate the report. Who says the report is not good? No, I am saying, who is saying the report does not capture what is in the health sector? What is missing? What is missing? Yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, right what is missing, Speaker, you not by Madam Speaker, in 2001, African states under the African Union made a commitment to contribute 15% of their budget to the health sector. Last year in February 2023, they made a recommitment to make sure that 15% of our budget goes to the health sector. When you look at what they have presented, Madam Speaker, it's five percent of our budget, or what we intend to, to spend in the next financial year. So, is it procedurally right to continue not respecting our international commitments, and then we actually go ahead and pass a report which has not captured that element of our commitment that we we made last year, Madam Speaker? When you send us in these international forums to represent uh, Parliament and even this to is not a budget. This is a ministerial statement which is going to be harmonized in the committee That I understand, Madam budget. Speaker. But our resolutions and commitments from here will fo form the decisions of the budget committee. So that's why I was asking why we, we could not capture it. And Are pass you it sure that it was not included in the BFP? Madam, it's not. That's why I'm raising it. And if it was, the, the chair can also advise. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, uh, Daudi. Daudi. I am seeing all of you want to talk. You live here at 2 a.m. Uh, right, right, Honorable Speaker, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes, yesterday we left this place at 11 and were comfortable. Right, Honorable Speaker, I can see the Honorable Minister is rushing to come and uh, react on what the members have submitted. But 
this is one of the most important sector that we need to talk about, right, Honorable Speaker. Agriculture, we did not debate. Water, a few members debated on it. I request that, right, Honorable Speaker, you let members give them more 30 minutes and talk about this sector. Maybe the Honorable MP from Kasese is comfortable. He has LSS centers everywhere and his people are happy. But I request that, right, Honorable Speaker, maybe 30 minutes, if you allow, we contribute on this issue so that we legislate on matters that concern our people. I beg to submit. Honorable, Honorable Kavanda, I did not allow the motion, and that's why I, I allowed. I asked what is not included, and that's why I'm getting what is not included. Why we did not discuss agriculture? Because it was straightforward. There was nothing you had to add. Yes, uh, Jen. Uh -uh. Jen. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Then Presidential. Right Honorable Speaker, what I want to add to this report, much as we talked about emergency services, we seem to be concentrating on the issue of ambulances. Right Honorable Speaker, yesterday in your communication, you informed the country about, I think this morning, about the rising water. And some of us who... In West Victoria. Yes, and this will definitely affect the River Nile as well. And for some of us from uh, districts, neighboring water bodies, this comes with health issues, waterborne uh, diseases. And already in, in districts like Pakwach, we have uh, the challenge of Bilhazia, and we, in the health budget, I expected to hear about more of uh, blood banks being taken to such, such districts that are affected by Bilhazia because we have a lot of people we are losing or many people who are sick and vomiting blood every other day because we, we have to take them to Arua, we have to take them to Gulu. And, and if this is not addressed, Madam Speaker, coupled with um, the issue of other diseases, we are going to lose young, productive Ugandans because of that. We need uh, blood banks in places Honorable like Papua District. Honorable Minister, I hope you're listening. In, information, there's, there's information here, right? On the I said next is uh, presidential. Presidential. Honorable members, there's even an outbreak of uh, the, the ice. Thank you so much, Right Honourable Speaker, for the opportunity. I am concerned about cash facilitation for the village health team members. Right Honourable Speaker, I made a tour of my district. These people are doing tremendous work. And I agree with you with the areas that you mentioned that we should budget for. But they are asking for cash appreciation like what we do for the LC1 tier persons. Right on our speaker, I got this when I was touring my district. Two, right on our speaker, the issue... And the, the LOC ones were covered under the local government. Yes. We could actually look at the VHTs. Yes. Those people move a long distance. Yes. So Secondly, right on our speaker, I support the committee, but... The expansion and renovation of district hospitals was left out, unlike the regional hospitals. Right on our speaker, I have an alarming situation in Ajuman district. People are delivering in grass touch houses in Ajuman district. Many of my words are leaking. I have been in touch with the ministry for the last five years, and no action has been taken. Babies are in grass touch houses in the district hospital. Right on our speaker, I plead with government, I plead with this house that a Juman district hospital be provided for. One day, the roof will fall on the children and the mothers. Thank you. Thank you. Was it in the last uh, budgeting period where you said 
you needed to increase more of the health center force uh, because of the cost than having one district health district hospital but even when you talked about that I have one of the most dilapidated health center force in Bukede. Yes. Sanoni. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Linda. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the committee and the chair. I am going to give you people to speak. Thank you very much, Right but Honorable. But one minute. Uh, right Honorable, the government secured the loan to make sure that all sub-counties get a center threes. But as we talk now, that loan has ceased. In the report, I have not had anything to assure us the remaining sub-counties without health center threes which arrangement does government have is it, mm. to make sure that, for example, right on arrival in Kaliro, specifically in Kaliro Town Council, which is very big and very soon it may even become a municipality, there is no even a health center a city. too. A city. Even a city. Because right on arrival, Kaliro is very strategic. Now that Saka Bridge has been completed, now people from Palisa, Right on our, this is where you pass when you're holding to the end. It is a very strategic town, but there is no hospital. Right on our, when the Minister of Health came to Kaliro this week, she assured the people that Bumanya Health Center 4, which the President promised, he pledged that it will be a general hospital. The Minister committed that every financial there will be some infrastructure improvement. But this year, I have not seen any allocation for that very hospital. That's why, right on the road, I see that this is a disadvantage because Kaliro is very strategic. When you go to Mumanya Health Center 4, our health workers are so specialized and committed. That's why we get uh, patients from all districts that are neighboring Kaliro. So, I really want the minister to clarify. And the committee herself that what was mentioned last financial year, you continue with that commitment, but... Actually, it is on that same road, Honorable Minister, because of the failure of that hospital, that health center, it is on that same road where Honorable Katundu's brother last week got an accident and he could not be saved. He had to be taken back to Palisa. Because the road is too good. Linda. Uh, th thank you so much, Right Honorable Minister, Right Honorable Speaker. I would like to thank the committee and the chairperson for the report which was thorough. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, last year, Parliament appropriated the funds for procurement of CT scans, which were procured and installed. But these CT scans were installed, but we do not have radiologists. So when these scans are taken, they have to send the scans either to Mbarara or to Mulago for interpretation. So as Parliament, we need to appropriate funds to recruit crucial staffing. Staffing, yes, crucial. It is not just crucial. We need money for staffing. For the entire staffing of the health sector. Because when sector. you go to ICU, there are no staff. Dialysis, there are no staff. Even just medical workers. You go to health centers, there are no staff. It is cutting across. Abangaina. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. Um, the one thing I have not seen stand out in the report, though I would like to thank you so much for what you have presented, the issue of monitoring and evaluation. The, the staff in most of the referral hospitals, even the little hospitals, the center tools, you will find that because we don't monitor them, 
on a, on a consistent basis, we find that they don't report for work. A lot of what is installed as hardware does not serve the people because the people are supposed to monitor and do the job are never on job. So I am requesting that we look into a budget for monitoring, consistent monitoring either by the ministry or the district. I'm not sure where it would go. Another thing that I notice with this is that the systems in place, the way we work as a government, brings in all the issues of not delivering. Because if the system is saying we have to deliver through so and so, then there's no medicine because one sentence in the system is failing delivery of drugs. We probably need to sit down and look into a change in these systems and make services available to the people. Thank you. When your, when your time is over, it automatically goes off. You just need to request to switch on or give it to another person because you are the ones who all who want to speak. But when you talk about monitoring of these health workers, the presumption is you're employing people who are responsible and they must deliver. Now, if we are going to spend money on getting other people to monitor you, anyway, we have the, the state house what? monitoring unit, we have what, but we have directors in these hospitals who should be able to monitor, supervise that everybody is working. Faith, Matchbox, Dr. Bed. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My assumption is that when we do ministerial policy statements, they should speak to the presidential pledges. In 2022, when the president visited Murulinga in Napak district, he made a commitment to Bishop Damiano of Moroto Catholic Diocese that he will contribute 600 million to St. Kizito Hospital, Matany, to take care of the cost of treating the gun violence victims both soldiers and civilians. At that point, the hospital was at the verge of closure, but the president told them to tarry on and save the situation because the, over 3,000 people would have died. Now the committee has not captured that. At what point do these pledges fit into the budget? Thank you. Uh, right Honorable, I want to thank you. Uh, I have two concerns, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, when we had a tour in most of these referral hospitals, right, Honorable Speaker, we have realized actually there are insects, the cockroaches, uh, encroaching, actually they're invading the, all the drawers that we have in those uh, hospitals. You can imagine a patient is sick, and then a cockroach runs over a patient's food. They don't fumigate, eh? Yes, they don't fumigate. So we want to, uh, I want to bring to the attention of the Minister of Health to take note of that such that they can also appropriate for formigation. Then secondly, the labor suits that we have in most of the referral hospitals are now very small. They need expansion. Because we have moved to, these health, uh, to those labor suits, we have realized most mothers even give birth while they are on the, on the mats, and which is very unac un unacceptable. Lastly, a rural referral hospital does not only serve the Uh, Dr. Bede. Right Honorable, about one year and a half, this house approved a loan of 70 million for Heart Institute. Up to now, this money is not deployed. We are paying commitment fee. The Minister of Health should come on the floor of Parliament to answer. Right Honorable, we procured ICU equipment. They are there in hospitals. They are not deployed because of infrastructure. We are putting this money to waste. You are talking about Masaka, and we need only 590 for the infrastructure. Someone, we must have priorities right. And let's say, how can we be a nation without a petit scan? We are sending our people to Kenya. We are sending our people to India without a petit scan. We need it only six, 62 billion to ensure that this vital equipment for diagnostic is in this country. I pray. And I 
I remember uh, uh, Lady Cecilia used to talk about a pet, a pet. And uh, up to today, and the minister had promised that it was going to, to be bought. But it has been there up to today. Can't you? No, you can't. I, I have seen my sister Niva saying there is no money. You put it in the budget, and we see whether it is a priority or not. And when I see you putting a, a, something which is not a priority as a, a VHT, the VHT is that is a priority. VHTs are priorities. Esenu, uh, Hanifa, I am coming. Yeah, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I would like to, first of all, thank the committee for the report. And I want to request and challenge the means of health. That in Kapilibyong, literally every health facility needs to be refurbished. Some of them need to be condemned because they are collapsing. They have got um, broken walls, leaking roofs. Um, the one ambulance we have there is busy every day transporting mothers either to Soroti or to Amuria. And so I want to request that four of our sub-counties don't even have a health facility. We need them included in your budget. I thank you. Thank you. Anifa, Dr. Kamara. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the chair and the committee for the report. Um, mine goes to... Um, ben Amede. The gas cylinders in the hospitals. Uh, while you're budgeting for fuel, uh, I also want to put budget for the tra for transporting fuel, transporting um, or getting fuel from the plant in Namave, because um, in Kaolo Hospital we have many cylinder cylinders that are empty. So and yet that hosp that that uh, um, Kaolo Hospital uh, contains. Um, uh, many hospitals around that use it as a referral hospital. And then uh, many accidents along Ginger Road, uh, when they occur, they use Kaol Hospital. At the Dr. same time, Chris, you get there's there, one meeting in this no house. Gas, Dr. there's no oxygen. Dr. It Chris, there's one meeting in this house. We are talking about teenage pregnancies. You're going. <laughs> uh, right, Honorable uh, Speaker, I pray that um, oxygen be a priority as a, a hospital equipment in your budget. I thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank then you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the Chairman for a good report. I was I was uh, invited by the speaker. Order. I am giving information. <laughs> right, honourable speaker. The point I want to make is about the oxygen plants. Uh, for example, in the Kabale Hospital, we have three oxygen plants. One was brought during the COVID times. The second oxygen plant was donated by UNICEF. Both are down. UPDF started constructing a new oxygen plant. It has never been, uh, it has never started working. So, and it, I, as I hear, it is all over the country. The oxygen plants are not working. We should put money in the budget to make sure that these oxygen plants are maintained and oxygen is supplied properly in original regional hospitals. I beg Thank you for the information. Amede Mujiche Aguti. Honorable members in uh, the public gallery this morning, we have students and teachers of Kampala View Private School, Wakiso. Please stand up. Stand up. You're very smart. You're most welcome. 
They are here, they are represented by Honorable Seru Kenya David and Honorable Naluima. Honorable Naluima, uh, young children, uh, your mother is there, a very good mother. Thank you. Please sit. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I would like to applaud the committee for the extensive report. I have a few things to observe regarding the management in the health sector. This follows an interaction with the uh, uh, constituents. One of the greatest headaches in the constituents is when you have a line of people coming seeking help from the MP with the various health needs. So I did interrogate one of the enlightened uh, constituents on what he thinks is the greatest problem with our referral hospital, to be specific, in Bali. And he did say, the doctors, the hospital is mostly managed. The hospital is mostly managed by intern doctors. So there is no supervision by senior doctors. This, therefore, calls for a policy there shift. There is an order by a doctor. Madam Speaker, the interns are the doctors who work on a daily basis. It is very easy for you to find them on ward and think they are not supervised. Is the honorable member in order to state that my colleagues, the doctors, the consultants are not doing their work when actually they are doing the work of supervision, but it is only the interns who are always on ward on day to day basis. I'm so much in order because I was building <laughs> <laughs> I was building a case. Honor, honorable honorable members you should differentiate between a consultant and a normal doctor. Yes. So you finish. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me more time. I was building a case. So the case I was building is, right now the policy is that hospitals are run by directors who are themselves medical doctors. If there is a policy shift, this critical staff could concentrate on doing the medical work and other people manage the hospitals. Because there are not many in numbers. An example is the director of Umbari Hospital. He's a great physician, but he's preoccupied with doing the management of the hospital, yet he would otherwise be offering the critical skill as a physician. <laughs> Lastly, the management of hospitals is as far as case management is concerned, follow up. Follow up and supervision is wanting in this country. Uh, Honorable member, Thank your you. time is over, but I want to tell you one thing. If we can have doctors running the hospital, and then we also have a, 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 a doctor doing administration like a director. If you went to Mulago Hospital now, you would appreciate what Dr. Bianima has done. She has really managed Mulago Hospital. It is orderly because it is these medics who know what is required in which ward and where and what should be done. I, I don't think that would really be a problem. Uh, Connie, then Francis, further information from a doctor and a former consultant. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Just to agree with you, that actually we have many doctors who are not employed. 
and uh, we have taken a decision as cabinet to employ all Uganda doctors and deploy them down to the level of a health center three. Health center three. And now what we need to do is to mobilize resources so they pay them. So the director can still be a medical doctor supported by a hospital administrator and then we deploy more medical officers and the medical consultants. Clarification. So thank you. Thank you so much. Connie? Connie? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to add my voice to thank the committee chair and the colleagues for a very good report. However, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker, I notice that there are quite a number of equipment that government has put in hospitals and this equipment might get to waste because like for example in Lira referral hospital the CT scan cannot uh, the printer cannot print because the films that were given to them are not compatible to that printer and therefore we might find that the equipment might might break down because a thorough study is not yet taken to make sure that they maintain this equipment. A secondly, right honorable speaker, there are certain facilities that government has built which are Francis. Fortunate. Thank you so much, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, my father died at Marago Cancer Institute. I was there for seven years. You see people waiting for a patient to die. They are waiting. They tell you, the other one is about to die so you can wait. So you're waiting for somebody to die so that you get a bed. Where he may... I am talking about an experience I went through. Right on the speaker. Right on the speaker, I yes, stand yeah. to support that we give more money to Murago because I have been there I see lack of, so, of, 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 of beds, and I would want more beds at the Cancer Institute. Two. Honorable members, my father also died in Mulago, but um, I would think it is unfair for us to say that the medics say, wait, the other one is about to die. Hmm? Madam, may, may, maybe I clear it. It is not the medics. Madam Speaker, if I can conclude. Madam motion. Speaker, if I can conclude. Motion. Madam Speaker, motion. Order. Order uh, on the whole. The other one. No, but I've already corrected the, uh, the issue. It is not correct that they always say that so, so and so is about to die. No, that is not correct. Thank you so much, Rector Speaker. Rector Speaker, I want to conclude on the issue of uh, the mothers. Rector right Speaker, uh -huh. I personally purchased ultrasound scans through the help of Honorable Dan Chimosho from China and distributed to my health center threes. But they are not operational because of staff. So I want to suggest that on the issue of staffing, also look at the health center threes. Because women move from like Mwezu up to Mbarara for checking their status of pregnancy, they have to spend about 30,000 to get a service that is just for 5,000 shillings. And so it becomes expensive for them. In areas where the health center falls don't have ultrasound scans. So I would want to request the chair that you include the issue of staffing for that very uh, for that case for those cases in health center three. how long did fortunate thank you so much right yeah. honorable Motion. speaker thank you right Madam honorable speaker sp in according to our rules thank you right honorable speaker <laughs> affirmative action o order Right, Honorable Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. I would like to emphasize the point of funding for renovation of health centers. Right, Honorable Speaker, we have a very big challenge. 
especially in Kakuto. It's a health center for, but it serves, this is a border district, right, Honorable Speaker. It serves a very wide region. We have only two wards, one ward serving both the male and the female. However, just recently, the ceiling fell on the patients. The hospital does not have funding to renovate just the ceiling, and it's coming to us, members of parliament, who have to do this work that government should be doing. So I support the committee report that to renovate these health center facilities so that they can be up to standard. Thank you, Red Speaker. Um, yes. Uh, motion, Madam Speaker. <laughs> there is a, can I hear from the law before I allow your motion? The leader of opposition, a very able leader of opposition. No, thank you. <laughs> you kill up for the leader of opposition. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, for the compliments and the members. Madam Speaker, I want to applaud the committee and the committee chair for the very good report. It has some omissions, Madam Speaker, especially when it comes to national ambulance system. As you are aware, in the country we have uh, had to reach uh, uh, districts, for instance, on the islands, and I want to salute you for this time remembering the islands because I've seen some plan for 14 boat ambulances. But how about other hard to reach uh, areas like, for like instance, Bododa. the mountain? Like Bududa. Bududa with the mountainous terrain, even in the Karamoja sub region, for instance. Uh, so that this, we, we have raised this over and over. We have places which are not accessible by uh, other means of transport, except maybe uh, aircraft ambulances. And uh, uh, you will give me information later. You will come later. Oh. Okay, yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, the information I wanted to give is in line with uh, what the committee has left out. Right Honorable Speaker, in 2014, government started a huge construction project at Gulu Regional Referral Hospital to accommodate uh, 54 staff. And government injected 7 billion. But the project has told for the last seven years, government injected 7 billion. There is a balance since, of- Since you're a chairperson, LOC5, eh? Yes. And uh, to this day, the project has told it is at 70%. Uh, the regional referral hospital requires but how an additional is this connected billion. to the ambulance? The information is not uh, in any way connected. Uh, I'm, I'm right, related. Honorable Speaker. I wanted to bring it. I haven't concluded. <laughs> the, the right, Honorable Speaker, unfortunately, has not allowed me to finish. But what I want... Yeah, it, it, it is in the report 3 billion allocated for that. Madam Speaker, the next uh, point is um, where the report mentions the government uh, discharging a very good job in investing in hardware, infrastructural developments, in the service and the health care service delivery. But what is appalling, Madam Speaker? is uh, when we are having serious staffing gaps, especially critical human resource. And uh, a huge sum of money, I think my memory may not, may, may not serve me well, but it's about 250 billion, which has been allocated to enhance the wage bill. And up to now, such funds are still lying idle, unutilized. Moreover, we have we need uh, specialists like uh, anesthetists, like because there are very few, like uh, consultants, and that actually is a, a grave concern, uh, which this house should condemn in the strongest terms possible. 
Madam Speaker, the Mbale Referral Hospital is so central and serves so many regions, including Kenya. But it is disturbing, especially if you see the deplorable state of uh, where the works are reached on the surgical complex and the corruption that has even uh, caused the funds that had been allocated to be withdrawn or rather withheld or both. Up to now, oxygen plant, which was meant for that river hospital, was diverted to another region. And look at the challenges that that hospital, referral hospital, is grappling with, especially in water and the sewerage. Those districts that have been mentioned here and are uh, beneficiaries of uh, the allocation for, to address those challenges of water and the sewerage, Mbale is conspicuously missing and one or two, because I, I, I do not begrudge Entebbe or Masaka or even Hoima. But uh, why on earth would you live out in the whole of the East Mbale Refer Hospital? I would implore the, the committee to reconsider having Mbale included among the beneficiaries of this fund. To, to information? No? No, hold on. <laughs> to address the challenge of uh, water Hello. and the sewerage. Can we hear from the minister now? Uh, to respond particularly to this uh, concern, yes. Madam Speaker. Yes. Because they have done an overhaul and the water and the sewerage systems, they are districts that have been captured to benefit from uh, that allocation. And Mbale has been, I don't know why, deliberately left out. Madam Minister, I will be the happiest to get that response. Thank you. A clarification? Right on, Speaker, you emphasized on the issue of VHTs and uh, uh, honorable colleagues uh, were like it was talked about, but it is an unfunded priority. And yet we are saying they are a critical group for our health care. So that uh, unfunded priority cannot translate into uh, yeah. serious uh, priority. Yes. So I, I thought, given the emphasis you have given it, we make a critical decision on that. Thank you very much, Rutland. Honorable members, the people who move for you from one corner of the district constituency to the other are VHTs. Some of the politicians have even reached a level of buying gambles, buying bicycles for VHTs. But what about you who cannot afford that? Government must do it. So that must be done. For me, I can proudly say my VHTs have gambles, have bicycles, have what. But what about faith? Uh huh. <laughs> so, Honorable Minister, have you heard? So, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker and uh, colleagues. We have digested a number of the issues raised. Uh, the issue of VHTs was actually raised by National Medical Stores, and it's an unfunded priority. Uh, procurement of gumboots worth 5 billion shillings for VHTs, because they have to traverse, and it's, it's part of the personal protective gear. But right, Honorable Speaker, I will just conclude by saying that uh, Health is consumptive initially, but the gains of investing in health are, are cost-cutting in the future. We may want all this, but at the end of the day, it comes down to resources. Where we put the resources, we should first do a cost, benefit, and effective analysis. The running costs of ambulances, right on our... I give an example we should invest on the health center for on Kalangala Island because the cost of transporting him in a boat ambulance to the mainland and back is 200 liters. 
which is 1 million shillings. So we need to do a cost-benefit analysis before we invest, before we prioritize our investments. And uh, we need to look at diagnostics, human resource, legislation, infrastructure, and equipment. For the issue of Matani Hospital, right honorable speaker and colleagues, government, through subventions, annually, appropriate 600 million shillings to charge best okay. uh, hospitals the likes of Rubaga, um, Lacho, and so forth. Maybe it is time right now that those figures are maybe revised to a figure that is commensurate with the, with the pressures on the hospital. I've captured that. We shall look into it. Uh, the issue of Ajumani Hospital, the Ministry of Health told us there were issues to do with shoddy works in Ajumani Hospital, so they withheld development going to the hospital. Right, Honorable Speaker. There's uh, a clarification from workers. Thank you, Right, Honorable Speaker. Unfortunately, I didn't get time to, to, pres to talk about my issues. I want, I'm seeking for clarification from the chair. On page 14, they have mentioned, they have observed, but they didn't give us any recommendation that the Ministry of Finance is making variations on the wage pay of local government on anticipation about the payroll audit. Right Honorable Speaker, we are getting a number of complaints from districts. People with even slips who have been verified have already been knocked off the payroll districts of Chiriandongo, district of Hoima, Chivoga. I've received a number of districts. And you have, made, you have not made any recommendation, and yet the ministry is going to stop this money. So we want to find a solution, and the minister is here, should commit herself. After, after verification of some of these people, money will be provided for. Whether it comes on a supplementary, wage always takes a first call. Yes. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, you have guided well. I'll just conclude by saying that... Presidential. Uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this way, though the chair was not positive. Right, Honorable Speaker, saying that there was a short work in Germany and Minister of Health has made a stand not to do any development. To me, is a poor action taken. Because at the end, it is the people who are going to lose services. So, I want the ministry to provide a remedy in two areas. One, to save the lives of the people, but also handle the issue of the Saudi work. Lambing the two at the expense of the people will cause a lot of damage to us. Right on our speaker, people are Thank dying. You. And I've just got to know the reason now. Thank you. Can, can we first finish you before we are taking three hours on a one report? Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. You still have 80 reports. Uh, yes. Right, right Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. And just to let members know that Part of the health sector, actually the biggest part of the health sector is in local governments. So we are duty bound as members of parliament to go in, supervise, evaluate, monitor and report back to parliament. It will make our work easy. I thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister. In your oversight role, you should be able to find out what is not working out well and Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you uh, for the interventions and the guidance you have given during this session, which are all focused to see how, as a sector, we can improve on our service delivery. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the Chair and the Committee for a very well, good, laid out, structured, comprehensive report that was very clear and uh, very self-explanatory. It did not only give out the performance of the sector, 
but it went ahead to analyze the critical issues in the sector, recommendations, and the funding gaps. And again, it had to give mitigations on how, as a sector, we can continue to ensure good service delivery. I want to thank the honorable members, each of you that has contributed and those that wanted to on this sector, that most of the issues raised have been the issues that really have raised in good spirit. They have been with us, but as you all know, and as you have seen in the committee's report, everything is hindering on insufficient funds within the sector. And it is our humble prayer, since we are in an appropriation process, and that's what the committee is requesting, that at least we look and see how we can bridge these funding gaps. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you. There are many issues that have been raised which are really in common. For example, we are now going again to realign our sector service delivery performance. The health facilities that need to be upgrade, upgraded. The district health facilities. Now we have come in an issue of this code agenda and the ministry sector is going to be a shortcuts of 47 billion. It's my humble request. The, yeah, it, the, the, the right honorable speaker, you have said you want this issue brought back, and it is a humble prayer because it is going to affect our ministry. Finally, they are on the issues of equipment, uh, CT scans, MRI, and PET. Most of the answers, the chairperson, I want to thank him, has addressed them in the report and when he was answering. All of these, they affect us, especially the maintenance. Right, Honorable Speaker, we take note of your guidance on the ambulances that we consider the constituencies. And as you are aware, and the chair is aware, most of these ambulances are donations from our partners. But we are going to do our level best to ensure we follow your guidance as you have uh, clearly guided that in our next allocation we consider the constituencies. As I wind up, as I wind up. Clarification from you, sir. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Two issues for clarification from the Honourable Minister. One, she is making reference to a college agenda. I don't know whether it's within uh, Parliament for our reference. Two, to clarify on the ping pong between finance and uh, NMS. In we, are, we, are, we had already talked about a corrigenda. We don't know about a corrigenda. She's making reference to it. That's why I'm seeing her qualification and the contents therein that refer to the ministry she's speaking for. Uh, secondly, the, um, the ping pong between finance and NMS. The report clarifies the funding gap, including the failure of delivery of medicines and supplies. NMS says they have the medicines, they don't have money to supply them. Unfortunately, in the report, we do not have a figure of how much they needed to supply and they did not supply. Two, they're saying, inordinately, finance delays to make money available for them to deliver supplies. And the Minister of Finance is here. Between yourselves, may, we, may, may this house be informed who is telling the truth. Right on the speaker, you are aware I did um, a, a lot of field tours and in so many districts, NMS was supplying and demanded drugs. Particularly in Gomba, I was informed when that's for malaria drugs, they gave them the area drugs. And you see this mismatch. Who is really communicating the truth to citizens about supplies and the failure thereof? Thank you. But then there was also a commitment from the Minister of Finance that they were going to provide money for the supplies of the drugs by NMS. So we will need to confirm from finance if that commitment was fulfilled. Yes, Lee. Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you for allowing this. I think the former law raises an important issue which points to the procurement plans of the various votes which this house needs to pay attention to. Unfortunately, this was not brought to the fore and it is likely going to affect how we move. My clarification 
is on stalled projects the ministry initiated in a regional hospitals. For example, in Arua Regional Hospital, you initiated in 2018 construction of about 18, I mean 21 staff houses, which now require 4 billion to finish. And uh, the Honorable MP for Gul also raised similar issue. This has not been ably catered for. Secondly, the, the indicative planning figures, which the second one, which the Minister of Finance sent to the, the various votes, shows that uh, money for utilities, like Madam Speaker, money for utilities like power. Honorable, Honorable, you came in a little early. That issue was discussed here, and we even agreed on how best we can handle that issue. It was discussed here. Yes. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, before the minister comes in, I wanted to give information that uh, I beg to uh, humbly disagree with uh, my colleague that they ordered for anti-malarials and they gave diarrhea medication. First and foremost, health center twos and threes do not order. We, do, we have what we call a push system where we push drugs. Their procurement plans are made at the beginning of the financial year. It is from health center four hospital upwards who order. So right on able speaker, I wanted to make that uh, correction. Thank you. Yes. I, I am risking to be misunderstood, to be a spokesperson of NMS, but I thought I would help the House with this information and my former law, the former law for. What happens is that even if NMS delivered a medicine that was not requested, they deliver it with a form, and any facility is at liberty to reject. And they write a reason for rejection and they coordinate that with the DHO. However, what happens sometimes, when I used to follow that time, is that some facilities also ask for medicines they don't use, and when they expire with them, they now start looking for where to apportion blame. It's, it's quite a lengthy process that would need to interrogate, but it's not possible that you allow a medicine when you have not requested for it. Yes, can you conclude, Minister? Uh, thank you so much, uh, and I want to thank the, uh, my brother, Rob, sorry, Honorable Puga, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, the question has been answered every day by Honorable Dan Kimosho about the finance and NMS. He wanted to know the figure. That's the only thing I can say, and the report covered it well and uh, the, 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 the gap of the figure and uh, national medical stores is six billion. About the procurement plan, my colleague, it is covered in the report and uh, page 58. When you look at it, uh, it's well uh, spelled out. Right honorable speaker, in conclusion, as a ministry, we are going to look at the recommendations by the, 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 the committee report and see with the, of course, with the fundings that will come up, and this uh, parliament and through you, we shall see how we shall implement. It's our prayer that we would really be in position to have these facilities and equipment operation. I thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, when you buy scanning machines, you buy all those kind of equipments and you don't put them into use, it becomes a negatory expenditure. So it is, good, it is better for you to ensure that you have adequate staffing to ensure that those equipment are working. Right, Honorable Speaker, I take note of that. And I again take note that uh, we have the issue of maintenance and uh, insufficient fundings of maintenance as well as the fuel, as they have said. But as I've said together with the mini uh, our committee, on health and with your guidance we shall do our best to ensure that we provide 
and ensure that the equipments are all maintained. And we are going towards another sector of finding out how we can move on that. I thank you. And uh, remember you made a commitment on the PEP machine when uh, during the, uh, 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 no, it started with the Honorable Lanya. Went, went to Cecilia. You remember? It is in the resolution. Uh, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. On the issue of uh, city scans in regional referral hospitals, yes, as we recruit the radiologists, it is allowed in telemedicine to take a picture from Moroto and you send it to a, a senior specialist in Kampala for interpretation and then send it back. So it is telemedicine is allowed. I was just responding to a colleague. The issue of the PET scan, right, Honorable Speaker, PET scan, I just want to tell members, it's not a they one said machine. It, they said it was at procurement uh, stage. Uh, the PET scan is a project. It's not only a machine. It is the building, a very solid building with bunkers. It is a cyclotron machine. It is a PET scanner. It is an assembly of many things. So we want to start with the groundbreaking in phases. The total cost, right, Honorable Speaker, is about 200. 98 billion, which we all do not need at once, but we, sh we are ready to start in phases every year. But so it's Dr. called Ch a project. Thank I thought you. the minister said it was at procurement stage. Yes, uh, Honorable do Doctor. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I just wanted to add information to the Honorable Chair that we work with the Minister of Health and most of the equipment that is procured now is digital, like in the area of radiology, the x-rays, CT scans, they are digital x-rays, to the extent that if you take an x-ray in Kavale hospital and you don't have a radiologist, you can digitally share it with the radiology department in Morago, they do the interpretation, they do a report, and send it to you in Kavale, and that's Thank where you. we are going. Thank you. Thank you so much. I now put a question at the report of the Committee of Health on the Ministerial Policy Statement and, uh, and Budget Estimates for the financial year 2024-2025 be adopted by this House. Those in favor send the contrary name. There is have it. Thank you, ICT. Item 4.2. Now you will go and harmonize, reconcile your report to the Budget Committee. And uh, there are issues that the House has said are priority and must be regarded as priority. Can we have uh, uh, a report from, uh, from the Finance? It was supposed to lay evidence on the trigger. Uh, we are, so we are first handling uh, ICT. We are asking finance for a trigger. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I was here this morning and you sent me back to come back here with evidence relating to the payment of 17.6. 17.76 billion shilling uh, for the rehabilitation of Mandela National Stadium. Um, right on speaker, I'm happy to report that uh, uh, when I went back, I confirmed that the process was already underway. And uh, indeed, this morning, the Accountant General had uh, pulled the, the accountant general had pulled the trigger releasing 17.76 billion shillings and uh, attesting can, to that can you even, uh, lay the receipt uh, give me a receipt uh, and I see right on allow me to complete my statement <laughs> and I have put with this has been put in writing Signed by Honorable Matia Kasaija himself. 
Who is in Atiaka? Uh, no, he was still around. He's traveling, but he was still around. And this letter, which is addressed to you, if you allow me, it's one paragraph. I can read it. Evidence it of payment of 17.76 billion for Mandela National Stadium Limited. Please find attached the electronic funds transfer, the EFT, indicating that the payment of 17.76 billion for Mandela National Stadium Limited is selected for payment. This, yeah, that's the language used on the EFT. Yes, on the EFT. This payment will be received on Monday, 15th April 2024 by the, Monday. There are so many transactions yes. in the bank. So this is now with so the bank. So they of select. Uganda. Yes. So, so this it's is now with the Bank of Uganda at release. As on the part of the Minister of Finance, it has already moved on. And I've supplied a copy of the EFT, clearly endorsed. So, Thank you so much, Right Honourable. Can I, can I have a look at them before you lay? Uh, thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. First of all, I want to thank you for your intervention. I want to thank you in this house because if you hadn't used an extra effort, the sports fraternity would have been in a mess more and more. So I want to thank you. But again, with the Minister of Finance, every time money for sports is delayed in releasing, when they think of cutting the budgets, they cut that of sports. I want to throw you right on the speaker to plead to the Ministry of Finance. Always release sports funds in time because these games are timely. You lose money towards the end when the team had, has been already disqualified. And the same thing with the stadiums we are going to build for AFCON. Uh, in order to remain with the bid, three stadiums have to be already done by 31st December 2025. According to the frustration you're giving us right now, will the stadiums be ready? Thank you very much, right Honourable. The stadiums are going to be ready. What we wanted ready first is Nambole to host the, the games. And then the other ones, I already have a letter here, a blue letter on uh, Suma, that is for Hoima. And then the other one will be for, for Achi. <laughs>